baby, I know it. So Dashiell seems to be getting along okay with the Techno Hillbilly. What do you think, Scott? I think I'm gonna keep it. <laughs> <laughs> Peggy needs a buddy. Oh my God. How would Peggy feel about a little a little Siamese she kitty cat? We tried, she said it didn't come you off. Did, so well. You tried having another cat and it didn't work no. out? We had Magic Wanda for about a week. And had to rehome her. 11.20 in the morning on Tuesday, August the 3rd. Third. That sounds right. Yeah, third. 2021. And uh, on my long drive back from Valparaiso, Indiana to Greenville, Tennessee, coming back from the Port County Fair, I'm staying the night at the Bria uh, Walmart and, uh, and sent, uh, sent this guy a message. <laughs> this is the Techno Hillbilly, and Bria is his hometown. And uh, yeah, if you, if you don't, haven't seen the channel yet, uh, I... The Techno Hillbilly channel needs to blow up. <laughs> this guy puts so much work into every one of his videos. Uh, but yeah, we got a few hours and uh, I was in the area. So we're going to go. What, what are we doing today? He's, he, this is his hometown. So I was like, I'll let you decide. Well, so. This is Indian Fort Theater. This is like one of the big outdoorsy parks. Big outdoorsy parks. Of, we're not hiking to the top of the mountain, though. Okay. Let's go wander around. And this is where we have the craft fair in July and then there's another one in October out here. Okay, here's the trailhead. Area closes and gate will be locked from dusk till dawn. That was a good Tarantino movie. <laughs> so the college students are making these? Mm -hmm. Okay, and that's just playhouses. Yep. Then like that building out there is the, um, it's the Forestry Welcome Center but it's also the college's forestry department and the students in the forestry program actually live over there. All right, so they're they're using fallen trees, yeah. mostly, right? It, all this is a tree for the fallen. It's all fallen trees. Wow. Been in here. Now, like it, every one of these planks was cut with a handsaw. Are you sure about that? It um, looks very clean for a handsaw. I probably not a handsaw, but I doubt it was anything gas powered. Really? Because they they do things pretty old school here. Go on there. We've been cold in here last night. Uh, oh. Yeah, we need another. So we, we, this is this is rolling unfinished though. You still see in the uh, the ribs here with no insulation. We, we got to put insulation in there. Well, you have to put flashing, and then you got to put your wiring and your piping in there, and then you got to put your uh, insulation and then your sheetrock over that, and um, and then you got to do your facing and your tow board, and, and we'll, we'll we'll make this really nice and livable. Wallpaper, <laughs> oh, wallpaper. <laughs> so the eighties again. Little buddy, what do you think? Huh? What do you think? You want, you want to get out? I right, so think we should let him walk around in I'll here. I'll just wait. I'll show you where to let him walk. Oh, okay. All right. So tell us about this uh, amphitheater out here. Okay. So it looks like it's like the site of a bunch of big events. It probably looks older than it is. <laughs> really? It was built in 8, 1850. It was built in 1950 or 55, 55 as part of the college's centennial. This college was founded in 1855, and the students built it. Like a lot of things at the college, the students built it. That's how they paid their tuition. And they had a musical out here called Wilderness Road that told the story of the Civil War in our part of the world back then, because Bria was an abolitionist town in the middle of slave country. In, in the middle of the, right. We had an interesting history. And Wilderness Road, the musical, ran until the 70s, and then they had some bad seasons because of the weather, and they called it off for a while, and they tried again in the 80s. It did good until the weather got in the way again. And there used to be a building up here that was the concession stands. There were restrooms and concession stands on both ends. Right. Like down here. So there used to be a power, like power oh, yeah, lines there was, in um, it. Big light towers on both sides here. You can probably still see where they were if you walk down the side. Yeah. And um, they would set up folding chairs up and down through here. That building wasn't there. So they, instead of having this big Adirondack here, it was just a big hillside yeah. backdrop. They're not just doing musicals anymore. They're also doing yoga classes, they do, apparently. Um, they do a lot of nature hikes and things out here now. And there's some festivals, but not like you, they're getting it back in shape. So this this tree, it's an umbrella tree. The magnolia. Oh, magnolia. Okay. Tree that is in memorial memoriam of Tilly. And Tilly was an old mutt dog that lived out here. 
and she would hike the pinnacles with people who came out here to hike. And she had a collar on that said, I'm not a stray, I'll go hiking with you. And every night at the end of the day, she would go up to the top of the ridge and run a loop and look for people and bring them back down the mountain to the parking lot to see mm. to make sure people were lo weren't lost and could find their way back. She was here for years and years and years. And she got, I want to think it was, it was some kind of cancer and it had something to do with her bladder. And they wound up having to put her down. It, Probably a renal failure. That that yeah. happens to a lot of, of elderly dogs. I, one year at the craft fair she was out here, she was kind of peeing on herself when she walked. Yeah, she was having it was a renal she failure. That's shake. that's actually just a thing that happens. I mean, the, if you're looking at the numbers here, she she was 13 when she died, which is, that's a good run for a dog. What, what kind of dog was it? She's just old mutt. She's like a black and white kind of speckled dog. You can find pictures of her if you Google Tilly of Indian Fort. There's stuff online about her. She was pretty famous, especially yeah. in this part of Kentucky. Anybody hiked here knew Tilly. It's more of a, just like an Adirondack. Oh, there's some power conduits in there too. So they've had power in here. Some lights. I wonder if they'll turn on if you flip these switches. Aaron's nickname is Petty Spaghetti. Nothing. What does it say? Aaron's Petty Spaghetti. Aaron, a.k.a. Petty Spaghetti, loves Brittany, a.k.a. Bingo. So Aaron's nickname is Petty Spaghetti, loves Brittany, a.k.a. Bingo, forever. The number four, hyphen, ever, 9919. Ah, uh, 9919, that was the last hurrah before everything fell apart. <laughs> uh, I wonder if... if if Aaron and Brittany come back here and say, oh, if we could only go back to whenever we wrote this and tell ourselves what was coming. Okay, this is the Brea Welcome Center, and it's also the last train depot on the line between either Cincinnati and Knoxville and Cincinnati and Atlanta, I can't remember, that's still standing. And I don't want to tell you what year it was built, they're going to tell you inside, because I'll get it wrong. I'm wanting to say 1919. <laughs> wow, 1919. Yeah, it's old. It just got renovated, too, about... Five years ago, maybe? Right at the end of, or right there at the beginning of the Roaring Twenties. Hey, darling, how are you? This is his cat, Dashiell. Oh, shoot. I've never seen a cat I'm on a road trip, and he's my traveling companion, and I can't leave him in the vehicle, so. No, so, modern problems require modern solutions. As it turns out, this was actually built in 1917. So, yeah, right before the 1920s, roaring 1920s. Here, here it is in different time periods. There it is in 1984. Looks like they've been they've been closed this area right here. So this, this cabin was donated? Mm hmm Donated to the city by, um, I can't remember who owned it. I just, I love the classic farmhouse look. You've got the loft, you've got the, uh, the shaded, uh, uh, overhang roof all the way around. That's, you know, from the days when there was no a AC and you needed as much shade as possible. Still do, kind of. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's, it's a classic farmhouse. Love it. Absolutely. Even the wooden shingles are still there and everything. Ah. Sh Shiflet. Shiflet. Shiflet cabin. Okay, so in 1802, Thomas and Elizabeth Shiflet had this cabin. And without reading all this, I mean, I guess you could freeze frame it and read it all, but in 2003 was when it was donated. To the city of Berea, 2003. 
He was moved again, this time just a few hundred feet to the end of Adam Street. It is now on display outside Berea Tourism Center. Let's go to the inside, see what that looks like. Tourism. Oh, it's, it's a shop. It's a wood shop on the inside. I was not expecting that. Wow, it's been retrofitted with some AC, too. I'm feeling it. Vegetables. Oh, uh, uh, my brother loves it for dry herbs and vegetables for shish kebabs. I use it for everything. If I'm doing chicken and I want to cut strips up, there. If I'm it's cut it's the up, old rustic version of the slap chop, right? So. Do walnuts in there, whatever. And I do either. This is a brim maple. We do butcher block maple, and then this is the deeper wood from Africa. We'll do a padu uh, and a. Uh, Oh, it's a dragon puppet. So tell us the name of your uh, your Twitch channel again. I'm Bacon Mom. Bacon Mom. C O N underscore Mom. And you just capital. you just reached Twitch partnership. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, I had uh, a thousand people in the chat for about two days. It's wow. down to thirty now. <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it, I'm not doing it for for that kind of stuff. At the end of the day, I need to go somewhere where there's no drama. And uh, so from 10 o'clock till when I get tired around midnight, um, I go in there and I, last night I built a little house of the year. That's me. I love it. That's Do your like in-game character there? Yeah. That's Bacon Mom. Bacon Mom. Gosh. That's one of Neil's weavings. He got went in the game. We play the thing together most of the time. Oh, look at that! My grandchildren came in secretly uh, against their mother's wishes and put hearts on my rainbow. Oh, <laughs> hung hearts from the rainbow. Yeah, it's not often. Oh, and is this the quilt that you put on top of the mountain? Yeah, I do them all over the place. I, oh. The ocean is nice to do them in because I don't have to take down any trees or tell them <laughs> terraform the land. Mm. Neil built a house wow. for me, so I put a quilt on the side of the mountain for him. They say we're wholesome. <laughs> <laughs> I love all the color. Yeah, me too. Uh -huh. And for a long, little time, we had a, a game on the AT launcher. Welcome, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> we had Are you a game. The yeah. Nice. We had a game on the. AT launcher called Bacon Mom's Better Building Pack. Oh, and it was in 1.7, and now it's obsolete because we're up to 1.16. And so we've been working la uh, this last week on updating it. And instead of 25 mods, we're putting in 100. And there's going to be 15,000 new blocks of color to choose from. Wow. And there's Luna moths and hummingbirds. Um, in the 60s, and I guess I still am. I'm still waiting for the laws to change in my favor. Mm, exactly. <laughs> and I was uh, playing music every Sunday in Washington Square, Manhattan, and a man came up and said that he played a guitar and six strings was enough for him, and he had just got this instrument, and... He gave me an instrument with 96 strings. Would I? He gave you this? Yeah, yeah. Bill Perlman, and he he was on his way to Woodstock, and he didn't want to take this with him, so he gave it to me. And I didn't see him again until last year. I put his name in Facebook, and there he was, and he had gray hair and a beard. <laughs> And he said, what happened to the jerky we're living with? <laughs> and I said, we got married, we had a kid, and I got a divorce. <laughs> and
And I said, what had happened at Woodstock? And he said, my car went from West 87th Street, where you li were living, to Times Square, and it broke down, and it took three days to fix it. So I never got to I miss it. it. All these years. I think there's a lot of people that have stories like that that never quite made it. Like that. We get hungry. It is lunchtime. It's nearly three o'clock. I want to say, but it's nearly three o'clock. Um, so we're at uh, Pap Papacito. Papalino. I keep wanting to say Papacito. There was a there was a Cuban place in uh, Atlanta called Papacito. I was a little anyway. Papalinos, and um, I've got the Hawaiian pizza, the uh, pineapple and ham, and uh, the big two slice, and the, get the beer batter. And, French fries. That's French fries. Yeah. At least in Maria. Yeah. But it's not just that. It's like, it's nice and cool in here. You got this rustic atmosphere and this beautiful window seat. It's right here. Look at this. Yeah, it's it's part of the experience. And they didn't say anything about, you know, little buddy over here. <laughs> he's got his own seat right now. It's like, oh, he's got a cat with him. They didn't, they didn't care. So, yeah. I'm going to wake this up. Six foot three, I can't drink that of. <laughs> can't see to stop laughing. We came by and saw this fudge shop with this out in front of it. Water for your dogs or short people with low standards. No judgment. <laughs> it literally says that right there. <laughs> yeah. Imagine if a little person actually did come by and read that. What would they do? I'm they tempted. Kick the sign. Say, I'm not short though. How dare you? <laughs> It's pretty uh, humid today, so I'm six three. Yeah, that's right out front of the white stitch. Stitch, the white stitch. Oh, it's not. It's not a. It's it's not the, the dessert shop. The yeah, the, the fudge. <laughs> the fudge is the next place. Fudge shop. <laughs> so the white stitch is the one that's taunting little people. Okay, so we're now on the campus at what what art building was it? Oh, this was the Lincoln Art. It was the Science Hall. <laughs> the Science Hall. I keep wanting to say the art building. I, I think Berea. I think art. So this was the Science Hall. And your last video, there was still a big chunk of it standing. Now, this part of it was still standing when I was up here about four days ago. Three days uh huh. Ago. And now it's it's nothing but rubble. But they're separating out the metal to go take that and have it recycled. What, what they're going to do with the rest of it, I don't know. All the concrete and brick and everything. Look at all those big... Those twisted piles of rebar there. It makes me think of abstract art, like outside of college. <laughs> like they could take that, just weld it together and spray paint it different colors and it would be a piece of abstract art. It's kind of hard to process because that building was so big and sat there for so long. How many years was it there? The first part of it was built in the 20s. They built half of it. And in the 50s, they came back and built the other half. The 20s and the 50s? Yeah. And now it's just gone. In a matter of three days, it's just gone. I can't get over it. I've not seen the plans for what they're building back in its place, but I'm sure it's going to be something to lay eyes on. It seems like it would have been more cost-effective to just, like, go and get it out and renovate it than to do all this. The fire exits were problems. There was only two doors uh -huh. for a five-story building. So make more doors. Um, it wasn't handicap accessible. Oh, uh, okay. And part of, from what I understood, and this is talking to people in town that know things, the building was built in, with only brick and limestone. Uh -huh. So it wasn't a thing where they could just like take out a wall and put in a handicap accessible exit uh, or something like it's that. It's hard to retrofit it. And it was just the way it was designed, there wasn't going to be no way to save it we're starting over new then and that's not something that happens here very often <laughs> no they like to restore here it's just so weird
There it is from a different angle. Wow, this is a pretty garden. It's more of a deep purple. Oh man, a little koi pond and everything here. Now, see the stones in the wall that are off, that don't match? Uh huh. There's a reason. And I'll show you that reason here in just a second. Actually, right there's the reason. Oh. These are stones that were sent here and collected from different important sites around the world. Uh huh. And those are the keys to where the stones are from. And some of them are some, you wonder how they got it. Wow. How do you get a stone from where Jesus' carpentry shop was? You know, things really? Like they have one of those? Um, they have a piece of um, Lincoln's original tomb. Um, well, we're back at the Walmart now. Um, I'm about to get back in the truck and start continue the, the next leg of the trip. But I just wanted to say thank you once again to the Techno Hillbilly. Anytime. Techno Hillbilly once again. And uh, yeah, so if you haven't already, go subscribe to Techno Hillbilly and give him, give him some watch time. Come to Brian Saby. Yeah. Make sure to hit that thumbs up like button. Subscribe if you haven't already and turn on all notifications by hitting the bell and then selecting all. I will talk to you down in the comments. And as always, look forward to seeing you in the next one. Bye-bye.